I'm Bruce Tuff, principal of the Tuff Law Firm. We are a full service law firm serving the greater Woodlands area and the greater Houston area. Contact us at 281-681-0808. We're tough for you. Welcome to The Legal Fix, a new age radio show brought to you by The Tough Law Firm. We're the toughest law firm in town, with the toughest lawyers around answering your toughest legal questions. All right, all right, all right. We're on The Legal <laughs> Fix. I'm your host, Bruce Tuff. I have Boy Wonder, Brandon Riley yo, with yo. me, and super lawyer, G.I. Jerome. How y'all doing? Hey, doing good right. to hey, see y'all. Why, why do you dance like Donald Trump? It's a bumper <laughs> That's where I learned got my him. best move. Look, here's my best move. I think right here. Got, got him. Got him. Got him. Hey, Mommy Manda's in here. <laughs> She's going to keep us clean or try to, I guess. We'll see what happens. We'll try. Hey, I want to. I had a few people call me and they said, Hey, how do I become a sponsor on your show? And I said, Hey, call 281 681 0808. We will love to have you sponsor our show. There's a big long line, but you know, we'll fit you in somehow. Sign up. Yeah. So today's Cha-ching. show is going to be about criminal law. We're going to talk about everything you want to know about criminal law. And so I'm going to ask the tough question to my uh, co panelists here How many people have been stopped by the cops? Raise your hand. Okay, that's five for Everybody five. Up. Everybody's up. Five Everybody's five. up. So, you know, when you get stopped by the cops, there are do's and don'ts. The first thing is, I'm going to toss it over to G.I. Jerome, and Jerome's going to tell us. Yes, when you get pulled over, we're going to go Minute. over some do's and don'ts. And the first thing you have to do is to be compliant. Pull over. Pull over, yes. Comply with the lights that you see in your rearview mirror. Signal immediately pull over to a safe spot. Safe space. And then what do you say when he said when the cop walks up to your car? What do you do you say anything to him or do you uh, respond? Do you Absolutely. Say, Why the hell did you stop me? That's my first question. I'm well, on I'm on important business right that, now. I'm it is going, a, I'm going to a party. It is, I would not recommend niche, niche, saying that. Niche, niche. Make that party a meeting and then you're good. But no, it's, it's important to set the tone of the engagement and set a friendly, direct tone with the, off, with the officer. When you get pulled over, you should roll your windows down and you should put your hands on the steering wheel. Do you and have you to roll them smile. all the way down? Roll the window all the way down? Do you have to? It's I a have good power idea. power windows. Can I just press the power window button? Press that power when window he button. Asked me, he, when he asked me, where are you going or what are you doing, can I just say, I don't want to discuss the events of my day with you. Is that a good answer? You can say that, but it's better to be polite and direct. Just give a direct, short answer to the officer. If you start a combative tone, then the officer can get combative with you, and that's a road you don't want to go down. You know, the last time I was stopped was just recently. And it was without, and I was actually making a very important call in an official business capacity, and I had to undo my seatbelt to make that call. Okay. And, and then I was stopped for having no seatbelt on. Oh, Can you no. believe that? Why did you have to undo your seatbelt to make uh, a phone call? Yes. Because I dropped my phone <laughs> 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 while I was driving. While I was driving. Don't try way. that in yes. your car. Yes. So uh, yeah, that was. And then the cop said to me. Where, Mr. Where, Tough, <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> I go, I'm trying to do my normal business activities. Yes. Are you poking the smart? Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> At least he recognized you. So that's good. Um, second step, once you get pulled over, is to acknowledge the officer's authority. Say, I understand that you have the power to write me a ticket, or I know that I was speeding, or that I had my seatbelt off, and I'm sorry. And what that takes... Do you always just, use yes, sir, and no, sir, Jerome? I, I do you think always do that? Yes, sir, and no, sir? I think it's yes, a sir, good Yes, sir, Mr. Idea. Officer, sir. It's, it's very good to acknowledge their authority. That way they don't feel like they have to assert their authority over you and make you understand that they're in charge. Just tell them, hey, you're in charge. Hey, should I get out of the car first? How about that? I get out of the car and approach the officer. Is that a good move? Not unless you're asked to. That's not the type of behavior that they're looking for. They're looking for immediate compliance with their instructions. So if they ask you to get out of the car, then yes if they don't do not get out of the car okay all right what's your worst experience with a police officer jerome 
Oh, man. Well, on behalf of... <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to pass Boy Wonder, on, okay? We're um, not going to ask him. <laughs> <laughs> on, be- on behalf of clients, I've dealt with a lot of difficult situations involving law enforcement, and that's why it's helpful to know how to behave around law enforcement before you get into that situation, and that's the type of tips and advice that we're giving you today. So be Free. Com- Free. Free right? advice. Free, free advice. advice. Yes. Be, free good advice. That's free, what it is. Good free advice. good advice. And honestly, I'm fired up about our callers today. I think we're going to have some good questions oh, on yeah. criminal oh, law. Oh, yeah. We get a lot of those. You know, over the course of my career, I may have had 20 DWI drug possession cases. I was an intern in the district attorney's office. I tried a sexual assault case and a murder case. Second chair with John Holloman, who was my felony chief prosecutor at the time. That's kind of how I was starting out in law. I learned my evidence that way. Uh, Great, great experience. And attorneys who do criminal law are amazing. Those are some of the best attorneys that I've ever met. They are in court all the time. They're in trial. They're there. This is the dearest thing to you. When you're losing your liberties, it's uh, it's bad. And we've been on both call? sides of the V. Yeah. Can we take a ring. call. Let's take yeah. a call. Thank you. See, the lines are already legal opened up. Fix. Let's take a call. The hey, welcome. Welcome to the legal fix. The you're legal on the legal fix. fix. How can I help you, Bruce? Tough at your service. Legal fix. Hi, my name's Audrey. Hey, Audrey. Hmm. Hey, Audrey. Welcome to the legal fix. Um, I'm calling about an incident that happened about two years ago, but I'm kind of just wondering if there's anything I could have done about it at the time, because I didn't. Well, what's your issue? Um, How can we... Go ahead. Sorry, what did you say? What is your issue? Tell us about it. So I was driving with my friend back from a concert. We were in high school, so I was about 17. She was driving, and we got pulled over because... She supposedly didn't use her turn signal to change lanes. And so we were pulled over into this parking lot. And whenever the cop came to her window, he basically said that he smelled marijuana. Emanating from the vehicle. And what happened? He said that? Yes, the cop told my friend that he smelled marijuana. And he asked her if she had any in the car or if she had been using marijuana at any time that night. Poking the smut. And what did you say? No? I wasn't saying anything at the time, but my friend denied it because she had it. She didn't have anything in the car. And she told the officer that we had been sitting on the lawn at this concert location. And so she said maybe it's from that, but... And what did he do after that? Um, he... Came, actually came to my side of the car and asked me if she was lying and asked me if I uh, knew that she had anything in the car and then he took my ID and he asked us to get out of the car and said that he was going to perform a search we had to stand um, on the front of their car and wait while they performed a very thorough search and he made you stand on their car another... with drug dogs did they have drug dogs no, doing a search no, or just do how many how many did they have how many police officer there, units showed there up were initially two officers but then two more officers oh my god started, are you smart looking. i bet you <laughs> yeah. two are wicked smart that's why they were searching the car <laughs> surrounded them they yes looking oh the, two like high school woods. girls two high school girls All hands okay on let's get four police cars out right now <laughs> oh hey they're really smart they're wicked <laughs> smart come on guys <laughs> Yeah, I can bring your donuts with you. (laughs) Man, I'm sorry that happened to you. Well, first thing, I wouldn't have consented to the damn search. I'd say, hey, get a search warrant. And you're not searching my car. And, you know, you stop me. You call me. Call the tough law firm. That's what you you do. You call us right now. We'll be right out there. Yeah. And uh, Audrey, was it? Audrey, yes. they have to have reasonable suspicion in order to pull you over, stop and detain you and talk to you, which they did with your uh, failure to signal. They had a reason to pull you over. Probable cause. But then they have to have probable cause, PC, in order to perform a search on your vehicle unless you consent. So that's why you're, you'll hear things like, I smell marijuana emanating from the vehicle. Do you mind if I look around? If the officer testifies that he smelled marijuana, he does have probable cause to he made Before that up, Jerome. A That's search. a total makeup deal. That, that bogus, 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 bogus. Uh, yeah, it could niche. be. It could be. And then that's when you hire us to figure that out for you and prove that in court that it was a warrantless search. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry to hear about that. Right now, not much you can do but learn from that bad experience. And, you know, some 
some of these uh, police officers and just go beyond what they're supposed to do. Really, not the right thing to do. But I wouldn't have consented to that search. I don't. I don't not going to let anybody search my car. Are you kidding me? And, and prove it. Like we were talking about earlier, Audrey, you can very politely decline by saying, "I'm sorry, but if I'm within my Fourth Amendment rights to decline, I would like to say no." Fourth to this Amendment search, search and seizure, don't, wrongful don't search and seizures it. in the in there. Yes, sir. Do can not I drop say yeah, and write to an attorney. <laughs> no, yeah, right. Don't say that. Don't. Oh, my Fourth Amendment rights are being. Don't say that. Just say no. Thank you. Yeah. No. Okay. Thank you, sir. All That's right. a simple answer. answer. Okay. The moment you bring up law. They go haywire on you. I know they do. Uh I know they do. Okay, we're going to take a break right now. We're going to come back for our second segment. We're going to handle more of your phone calls, and uh, we'll be seeing you real soon. I'm Bruce Tuff, principal of the Tuff Law Firm. We are a full-service law firm serving the greater Woodlands area and the greater Houston area. Contact us at 281-681-0808. We're tough for you. Disaster tips from the objects left behind. My home wasn't insured, but you can check your insurance policy now to make sure you're covered. Oh. My savings are lost, but you can put money aside and plan for unexpected disaster costs. We're lost forever, but you can scan important documents now so they survive. For more tips on how to prepare, visit ready.gov. I'm Bruce Tuff, principal of the Tuff Law Firm. We are a full-service law firm serving the greater Woodlands area and the greater Houston area. Contact us at 281-681-0808. We're tough for you. drive at your location, go to give blood. Hi, I'm NASCAR driver Kyle Larson. Whatever I'm driving, I do everything I can to stay focused and safe. You should too. That means no drinking and driving, ever. Because even the smallest amount of alcohol can make you skid out of control. Remember, drink, drive, go to jail. Hey, welcome back to The Legal Fix. The I'm Legal Bruce Fix. Tuff. I've got Legal Boy Fix. Wonder, Brandon Riley, and I've got G.I. Jerome, super lawyer here. And we're handling all your toughest questions, and we're talking about criminal law today. So it's uh, it's probably a topic uh, that everybody needs to know about. <laughs> hey, what's going on with the recent... Oh, oh, I got a call. Got a call. <laughs> I can't even get under our program. With all got your call seat off. Let's take this caller. Fix. Come on. Welcome to the legal fix. The legal fix. The legal fix. How can we help you? Hi, my name is Jane, and I just had a quick question. If you've been pulled over or something, can you whip out your phone and record while you're talking to the police through the window? Jane, thank you for your question. Great the question. answer is Great question. absolutely. Yeah, good question. Maybe even it is a good idea to do that these days. Oh, I'd do it. Yeah, I'd absolutely. Do it. I what mean, if they at, tell you to stop? Yeah, stop they can, recording what, me. Now, well, there's some legislation that's been tossed out there saying they want to prevent people from recording the police, but not. It's in several jurisdictions, some other states, but not here. In Texas, you have the right to record in plain sight. Now, if you reach into a cop car with your camera, they're going to confiscate it. Yeah. If you're inside that's your vehicle, you have an absolute right to but you're record in your what's going on in your vehicle. Yeah, you're in absolutely. your vehicle. That's your in within your shimmel circle, within your privacy area. That's right. Yes. What about on so the street? So, Jane, yes. What about on the street? Absolutely. Plain think, view would be anywhere public in space. public spaces. Absolutely. Yeah. I had a neighbor that was walking and was recording a police officer who had stopped someone on a traffic ticket, and the police officer told him he couldn't do that. 
and he talked to me and I said you can absolutely do that the you, answer is yes you, well, they don't have a duty a to inform street. well a police officer doesn't have a duty to inform you of your rights beyond reading you your Miranda rights that's right they don't have to tell you that it's illegal for them to search your vehicle they just have to find a way to get you to agree to it so it's voluntary that's right so that's right did that help you out caller we answer your That's great to know. Oh. Yes, it did. Thanks so much. Okay, for hey, calling thank in, you Jane. for calling. Oh, yeah. If you have a blessed Friday, thank a blessed you, for, Friday. thank you, Jane. Yes, and you know what? Um, if you ever have any legal issues and you want to call the toughest law firm in town, it's two eight one six eight one zero eight zero eight two eight one six eight one zero eight zero eight. But All right, you're, you're going to talk about something in the legislation, hey, recent yeah. legislation that would affect uh, everybody, right? What's Everyone except felons probably is oh, my guess, okay. and people under 21. This won't affect either of those groups. Okay. What, what's so the big news? Starting September 1st, 2021, House Bill 1927 was passed, which is called the Constitutional Carry. So what that means is that you no longer need a permit to have a concealed carry in the state of Texas. So you don't have is to do any testing. Is that everywhere? Can I just strap on my, my sidearm now well, and carry it down? You, I want to carry it low, any, right on my thigh. Okay, that's where federal, I want to carry it. Any federal building, any airport, that's going to be a niche, niche. Niche, Any niche. company that has open posted carry, signs. I can show it off, my open carry right here. Well, pull it well, out or can I, I, do I have to keep it hidden like my boot gun like I have a bond on right now yeah <laughs> it's gonna yeah. be iffy on that we'll I, see how that plays out in reality how about it's my shotgun that I'm trying to learn how to shoot that's been in the back of my car Bruce you shouldn't I'm, carry a gun anywhere why is that because <laughs> you might shoot yourself in the foot <laughs> well, I want to shoot someone <laughs> no no he didn't mean that he didn't literally mean that. 30, right. 30 nice. odd six sign what does that mean when you see the sign on an establishment about carrying a gun that means that they won't allow you to bring it in legally. Okay. And they have the right to keep you out of their restaurant or business. Stuff like bars, Absolutely. places where alcohol and guns could alcohol mix. Alcohol and guns don't mix well. They don't. They don't. Niche, niche. Yeah. So, okay. yes, very interesting news. Bruce, I have a tough question for you. Fire away. Which of your children is your favorite? Well, it rotates. You know, so everybody thinks Tara's my favorite, <laughs> but then Abby's been especially nice to me lately and Sydney is so beautifully sweet um, so you know it's kind of neck and neck and then I, I only alternate I tell them who's my favorite all the time so the Madison's one, gone so she can't be yeah, my favorite right now so say, the one you didn't name must be your least favorite then that's right <laughs> <laughs> how'd you know that who knows this just picking up the keys, picking up the keys. <laughs> hey, yeah, okay. Well, hey, we've got some uh, uh, some legal tips in criminal law from G.I. Jerome. She, he's going to give you some few few more pointers, and if we get any more callers, we'll take those. G.I. Yeah, uh, another thing to say on communicating with law enforcement, a good question to ask besides I'd like to decline the search, do I have the right to decline it, is am I free to leave? So... If you're being questioned or if you've been pulled over and you feel like you've said no to everything that you want to say no to and the officer is continuing to ask you questions, just ask if you're free to leave. And if you're not being detained, if the officer doesn't have reasonable suspicion that you've either just committed a crime, you are committing a crime, or you're on your way to commit a crime, then he doesn't have the right, he or she does not have the right to detain you. And it's a simple question. Am I free to leave? Right. That's, Absolutely. That's a, that's a really good point. In fact, uh, I don't want to discuss the events of my day to the police officer. And am I being detained? Those are two good responses to a police officer. And if, uh, and if he is detaining you, ask him why. What are you detaining me for? Here's a, a tough legal question. Uh, if I was pulled over for... Um, pulled over and I've been to a cocktail party and I had a few glasses of wine... Uh, and the officer asked me if I've been drinking, what do I tell him? That is a good question. <laughs> <laughs> now, in this scenario, you actually have been drinking, but you can say, as you said earlier, I'd prefer not to discuss that. The events of my day. Oh, prefer right. not and am to I being detained? And am day. I being detained? Am and that's, I being detained? Yeah, so there's a good response. So you guys learned from my little exercise. Absolutely. Yeah, right. So um, one of the, ta the cases, probably the most frequent, uh, that I have tried and represented individuals accused of a crime is driving under the influence and uh, minor possession cases. Right. So most of those involve a whole sequence of events. They involve a uh, breathalyzer or intoxilizer at the scene, a blood draw, and a video. So if you're in an unfortunate predicament where you have been drinking, you are stopped, 
and say the officer wants to do a field sobriety test mm -hmm. there's a whole exercise they do and I, I tell you i couldn't pass it sober but uh it is like doing calisthenics on the side of the road uh, you can refuse to do that, but that'll guarantee you probably a trip downtown or a trip to the, uh, to the pokey to, to the pokey for sure. And you can refuse a breathalyzer. If you do, you lose your license. But if it comes back positive, you lose your license anyways. Then you can get an occupational driver's license. And it is a torturous process, uh, and it, it is very involved. So um, be, be, uh, be warned. And drive. Do not drink and drive. Absolutely not. Well, okay, I'm going to take another break, and I want you to know that if you want to call the Tough Law Firm, call us at 281-681 for any of your toughest legal 281 questions. 281-681-0808. Okay, we'll take a break. I'm Bruce Tuff, principal of the Tough Law Firm. We are a full-service law firm serving the greater Woodlands area and the greater Houston area. Contact us at 281-681-0808. We're tough for you. Donation time. Hey, you ready to donate? Oh. Ask for your favorite songs using WhatsApp. The number 936 900 NASCAR driver Kyle Larson. Whatever I'm driving, I do everything I can to stay focused and safe. You should too. That means no drinking and driving, ever. Because even the smallest amount of alcohol can make you skid out of control. Don't be a loser and wreck your life. Be a winner. Don't drink and drive. Remember, drink, drive, go to jail. Hey there, this is Bruce Tuff. You're on The Legal Fix, where we answer your toughest questions. And I've got G.I. Jerome, super lawyer. I've got Brandon Riley, Wonder Boy. And we're here to answer all your questions about criminal law today and give some pointers and some tips. Uh, Jerome, you wanted to finish off some more stuff about what to do when you're being stopped by a police officer. Yes. Or law enforcement agents. So you've asked, am I free to leave? And the officer says, no. No. You're being detained, you're are you? You're being detained. Oh, man. I'd like to That's ask you good. a few more questions. Bad boy, what, what you, you going what what you gonna gonna to do when they come for you? you? So if they Don't have run. come... <laughs> Do not run. What you going to do run. when they come, come for you? you. As, as I was told, you can't outrun the radio. You can, you, <laughs> okay, you what, when do you run? Let me, is that a good time to run? After Just, they sick the dogs on yeah. you. <laughs> All right. Oh, where Never. I go? I got 10 feet. <laughs> there's there, there's no good time to what do what they Never. call eva evading arrest or, or evading That would be another charge. That, Just that to add on the whole stack that they want. The book gonna That's their favorite thing to do. So you're being detained and they say you're not free to leave they say i just want to ask you a few simple questions do you guys think that's a good idea for someone to at to answer questions without an attorney present no, no. and especially when every one of those answers is going to be held against you and used against yeah, you in gonna, a court of law exactly they're yes. going to read your miranda rights to you immediately. What, what is the miranda what is that what are miranda so rights? those rights are derived from a case it's the miranda case in which an individual was detained by the police, interrogated, confessed, but wasn't given his constitutional rights. To remain silent. Right to remain silent. Didn't know. Not to give self-incriminating right. evidence. Uh, right to an attorney. They give the, they, I don't even know the full list off the top of my head now. It's been too long. It is, you but know? here, I'll tell you, I used it in a case because what happened is uh, my client was being accused of financial irregularities at the Port of Galveston, and he was in charge of a lot of money. And so they were suing the company civilly that paid it, but entwined in that was a little bit of flavor of criminal aspects. And so they were taking his deposition, and I told him, I plead the fifth. And, and that's it, fifth the Fifth Amendment. Amendment, every question they asked him. And uh, it really helped, because if he had answered all the questions they asked him, he would be going to the pokey. Absolutely. Yeah. Niche, niche. Right. So it's a, uh, we, you know, we were talking about 
uh, what happens if you're stopped and it may be a possible uh, driving under the influence situation, uh, you have the right to remain silent. You don't have to say anything. You do not have to participate in a field sobriety test. You do not have to consent to it. Now, they could get a warrant for a blood draw from you, and that has happened. So um, possibly they will take the blood. blood. Draws, though. How do you fight those? Well, so your blood intake, there's this super complicated science to it. So it actually goes up the longer you've been from drinking, the higher up it goes. That means a higher function. blood alcohol level yes, in your you. blood. So it goes up, 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 up the longer you wait. So there, it is skewed. There are ways to fight it because of that. But usually it's going to come in. The judges yeah. around here are going to let it right. in. So the odds are you're getting caught either way. So and the video comes in. Yeah, but if you absolutely. refuse to anything do the field say, sobriety test, you, so then you don't do that. Anything you say or do can and will be mm -hmm. held against you in a court of law. Okay, I've got a tough question for you guys. Say you're in a car with some people that you are acquaintances, and you get stopped, and then lo and behold, the officer finds drugs in the car. Someone consents to the search, and they find drugs in the car. Is everybody go down to the pokey, or were they? Is everybody Everybody's everybody guilty for possession? Can they, they do they attach a possession on everybody? Yeah. They're oh, not guilty like, yet, yeah. but they can certainly arrest all Everyone's of you. They can arrest to them the all, right, right, right. But, you, but the possession aspect is, has, to, it has to be confined to a certain area within your reach, within your, your, your area of control. That's kind of the general way these cases work. I actually tried a case. It was, uh, there was a motorcycle club, and uh, they were operating out of Pasadena. And back in the day, it was real popular to have these uh, these uh, mandrax or quaaludes. So they would carry them around in little metal uh, little. They would have them in little <laughs> the Wolf of Wall Street. You, Tony what Montana. is those uh, re, uh, re, uh, the foil wrap? Foil wrap. Yeah, so they'd yeah. have them the foil wrap. So when they got stopped, and it was actually they it was a it was a sting, and they came and they circled them all, and so you know all these little metal you know they're flying everywhere like <laughs> snowballs. So uh, it turns out one was attached to the muffler of my client. It just kind of landed there. Of course, he wasn't even over there. They said these are your drugs. So we went to court. We did a, a probable cause hearing and went to, and this is you get a shot at the case and the officer and you ask him where he found it and where the defendant was in relation to the drugs and you know whether uh you know when he spotted it and what at that time what was their uh what was his relationship to the distance of the drugs and actually the judge threw it out so it uh you know nice, got that nice. thing tossed got it tossed PC yeah hearing. and you could do that in dwi cases too you have a pc hearing for the probable cause stop okay so you got to have probable cause can't just stop you because you look funny or like our previous caller was a wicked smart young, young lady. lady yeah right so that was a, it was really good so now, bruce you've worked on cases for both the prosecution and the defense right yes i have and done it, both ways right it, and is it is your experience as a prosecutor helped you as a defense attorney it did. It helped me a lot. Um, you know, the you learn the whole system from the front to end. The prosecutors are, do an amazing job. They handle a bunch of cases, but a lot of their preparation and work is done through the law enforcement agency itself, and then the information that they have included in the jacket or the packet of the of their of the file. Also, then it's an indictment that's handed down either by a grand jury in the felony case. So. Knowing how that whole system works then helps you in when you're doing the defense of a case because you know what it takes to prosecute it, then you also know what you have to do to defend it. And trying these cases, you know, you go to a jury of your peers, you present on the evidence. Um, it most uh, most of the time, uh, it's kind of a stack deck, but there's a lot of ways to yeah. beat it. And you know, the first thing I have my client do is I have them read the penal code and the charges that are assessed against them, and I say this is what they have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt and if you didn't do this we have a good chance of uh, prevailing at trial so that's uh, that's your criminal law lesson so if somebody wants to hire you as their defense attorney you already have the prosecution's playbook we have absolutely yes looking at it and and knowing what the what they're going to do and what they have to prove okay i want to tell you we want to thank you for listening in to the legal fix and we're the toughest law firm in town and you can contact us at 281-681-0808 i want to thank my co-host gi jerome super lawyer and wonder boy brandon riley and bruce tuff thank you